Ken, he's going to come right there. I don't know. We'll find it out in just a minute. I only can assume so. I'm going to get the dean of our organization out of here today if we can, Ms. Waits, if you don't mind. House Bill 528B first on the list um, by Representative Yates and others. If you will, present your bill, Mr. Chairman. This is a bill uh, to yeah. try to create a motel hotel tax. Uh, okay. This is home uh, for, for the city of Peachtree City. And I'm uh, on that group, I guess, because I represent part of Fed County. And um, the fellow that lives there, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's a lawyer and he does business with them. And so he's, I guess he gave you a piece of paper and retroactively took care of that. Yes, sir. Okay. He, he got it squared away. He, he had a conflict of interest, but you rules didn't establish about conflict. Yeah, he's an attorney. His attorney. So he, his law firm represents him. That's correct. He got it squared up on yeah. the rules. That's not a problem. So I've, I've uh, they've done all they're supposed to on this thing. They advertised the paper and all that stuff. Yes. And uh, everything's supposed to be ready to go. And I've talked to the clerk over there, and they very much want this bill, and it seems to be... A lot of local support for it. Yes. All right. This is, um, again, this Brother Yates bill. Um, he's representing the city of Peachtree City here, bringing a, a tax bill. Basically, it's a motel hotel tax. Uh, as you know, I always have a meeting on the tax bills. It is a local bill. It's not a general bill. Uh, they're moving it from um, five to eight. And um, it's all for tourism. It doesn't have any, It doesn't meet the code definitions for a general bill. Um, do you have any questions of the chairman? Okay, I'm ready for it now. Got to got to move and do pass in a second. All in favor, state by saying aye. All opposed. You're on your way to Griffin, and this is on the local calendar from for Wednesday. I'm hanging around for this uh, other thing too. I guess. I, I like when you hang around, brother Yates. You might bring some interesting comments to this. Well, you know, I I don't know. I, I was I'm always been for trains and everything, but I don't know about these bullet trains. <laughs> I had, to, I had to take some persuading there. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda, ladies and gentlemen, this is a hearing only. Um, and this is a hearing for Representative Waits and others. Um, this is the Piedmont Altima Hall Rail Authority uh, bill. And Ms. Waits, if you'll come. And I'll let you present your bill at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I know this committee has seen some pretty contentious bills, and I'm happy to say that this piece of legislation, unlike others, is nonpartisan, and it is my belief that's in the best interest of everyone at the table. Uh, currently, right now, if you want to hop in a vehicle and go from metropolitan Atlanta to Macon, it will probably take you somewhere between an hour and a half to two hours, depending upon how you drive it. It's my belief that this particular piece of legislation simply starts the conversation. It only forms the authority to begin the process of the concept of a super high-speed rail here in the state of Georgia. Currently, there is nowhere else in the United States that enjoys this luxury that the Europeans and the Swiss currently enjoy. It is my belief that we have a unique opportunity considering the fact that this project is 100% privately funded. So we're not asking for any dollars from the state. Uh, HB 306 is simply to establish the Piedmont Ultima Rail Authority to provide a short title to authorize such authority to acquire, construct, maintain, operate, and own a higher speed inner city urban rail and transit system in the counties of Bibb, Butts, Clayton, Henry, and Monroe. Uh, due to short uh, time today, and I know that everyone wants to get on the road, I have brought my colleague here. Uh, this is the city manager for the city of Forest Park. We've also brought with us the engineers for the project who can speak to the logistics, uh, to the cost. In your package that you received, we provided you a feasibility study. We've given you the advantages, and we've also given you letters of support from the local elected officials from the various counties involved. So this bill has actually been vetted. It has the buy-in 
getting the support from uh, local elected officials from Bibb County, Bucks County, Monroe County, Henry County, specifically the mayor uh, of the city of Macon. And so we're very proud of the work that we've done on this bill, and we're hoping that you will concede uh, and possibly give us your favorable consideration. Mr. Parker. Mr. Parker. Mr. Chairman, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. And uh, this is not something that was just dreamed up one afternoon and, and went to work on. The city of Forest Park has been looking at this problem for over three years now. We looked at things like monorails, we looked at uh, ground transportation, we looked at a number of methods that might help to resolve the problem that uh, Representative Waits just mentioned a few moments ago about transportation through the uh, middle Georgia area. I was fortunate enough to spend about 30 years with the United States Army, and I spent a lot of time in Germany, Switzerland, Italy, and other such uh, exotic places such as Morocco and Vietnam and a few other places that we don't talk about a lot. But in using the transportation system throughout the uh, European area, that was something that struck a note with me when we were getting serious about how could we do something to resolve this problem. Now, a train system is not the total answer. No, it absolutely is not. But it is part of the answer. This, this bill would allow the authority to form and to get underway with uh, the, the true planning, the basic engineering that has not been done, and then, of course, we go into the financing, and we have worked out a way that this system can not only be built, but pay for itself while it's being operated. Uh, the systems throughout Europe, uh, most of them pay for themselves. They, they're not asking the government for subsidies to, to keep these wheels rolling. We, uh, now, the feasibility portion of the feasibility study that you have before you is an abbreviated uh, document. There's a great deal of proprietary information in the true feasibility study, and that study is two books of probably 200 pages each. So, there's a great deal more to it than, than what you have uh, in your hands, but this should give you a bird's eye view as to where we are, the study that has been done, and now we know that it is feasible and can be operated as I have just mentioned. Uh, with that, I would be glad to field any questions you might have. Uh, does any member of the committee have a question for the gentleman? Okay, who's that now? Good afternoon. I, I too have traveled internationally. Let me, let me, let me warn y'all, we have to turn them off, otherwise it's... <laughs> well taken. I too have traveled internationally, and I know that I'm um, traveling internationally. I use the rail system, and it's very convenient. So I'm happy to see that something like this is coming to Georgia, even considering coming to Georgia. So as uh, long as it's not going to cost the taxpayers any money, and is that, is it that cost the taxpayers any money for this type of railing system to come to Georgia? Only to ride the train. There will be a fee to ride the train, yes ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. In the bonding that you're talking about, if, if an individual, if an authority like, and you may not know the answer to this, but if an authority is created as a subdivision of the state of Georgia through leg legislation, which you're proposing to do, and the authority goes out in bonds uh, to build a rail or to do whatever the project might be, 
and for whatever reason down the road they're not able to fulfill their obligation to that bond, is the state under any obligation at that point, since this is a political subdivision, to pick up that debt? I would certainly defer that to an attorney. With my previous uh, ex uh, information that I have gotten, and I have asked almost that very same question, the answer was no, that the private investors are investing in the operation, uh, the, the construction and operation of the system. If the system does not uh, make it for some reason, then it's the same as any other kind of an investment. You lose your investment. One other question, Mr. Chairman. Uh, indicated that they had support of all the entities, and I'm assuming this train would start in the Forest Park area and go down to the Macon area. So all the counties, cities that this train would go through have all indicated their support and willingness to help with this project? We have uh, talked to every county and all the cities that would be affected by this system. Uh, we, we have received uh, favorable uh, support from those people that we have talked to. Now, we also have received uh, some, well, they said it was serious inquiries from the city of Atlanta, I mean uh, Savannah, and they're wanting us to go all the way to Savannah, and we promised that we would, however, you've got to build the first step, right. and that's, and they understand that. All right, thank you. Mr. Representative Wade, thank you for bringing this bill. I know we've been talking about this privately as well. I, I support the idea of it, and what I'd like to do is take it back home to my constituents now that we have a study done and let them look at it. Let them see if we're going to use it, first off. If it's going to work long term, the citizens have to embrace it and use it. Uh, I think it's important, though, that we get the conversation going. But, uh, for example, the letter here from Henry County is actually from 2010. There's only two people left, actually one person left on that letter that's actually still serving in the Board of Commissioners. And they support the concept. And so now we, they have the concept support. Let's take the actual idea to them now this, with this report and see if they're going to embrace it, see if the citizens actually want it. And because um, I know it cuts right through the heart of my district. And giving eminent domain powers to an authority without knowing for sure the citizens are going to want it concerns me. Um, but I think within the next year we can dig into that and see that's something our county actually wants. And I do have a question for the chair. This is a local bill and will also require the signatures by every single county affected. And where, what's the status of us getting those signatures? You don't mind addressing that as well? Right now those signatures don't, aren't there. Um, I, and if one county in this that's named in here, that do, if they don't meet the signature qualifications, then the, I can't move the bill on. That's why we're just having the hearing. Okay. Okay, but we are having a hearing today because I want to, I want it vetted as much as possible. Um, the any other questions from members? Okay, Mr. Reiners. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Let's um, let's do a little bit here and start on that. How did you go about choosing the cities? Are, are those cities that are actually within the geographical the line and follow them the geographical area? You'll have to, I'll have to refer that to the engineers. Uh, my, uh, my input was I want to go from Forest Park to Macon, and the engineers worked those things out. Uh, Bill is here. Bill Eager. Well, this is really good author. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm simply here to speak to the legislative component, and I've asked the engineer uh, to be present to ask any questions in terms of technical and logistics. But I, I simply, Mr. Chairman, if I could just have a moment, wanted to address uh, one thing. This bill was actually brought on last year, very early last year. It was pre-filed this year, early in November. We've had five uh, sessions and uh, hearings on this bill. So I want to be, to be very clear that uh, we've had town hall meetings back home in various counties. So this is not something that's new. Uh, by any means to the various counties more to this body. We've, we've had several hearings on this bill. Thank you. Representative Wade, so I may. This report was just... Uh, yeah. okay. uh, well, she responded to my question. That's why I wanted to have a chance to... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Just give me a minute. Give me a minute. Write it down. I've got Ryan and Alright. Sure, I've got several notations here that I'm going to... If he wants to get his answer, I, I don't mind yielding to the government. Okay, if you yield, please. All right, Mr. But this report was just released today, is that correct? It actually details the actual plan that we have on this rail line, right? 
due to the fact that there's proprietary information in the document, it was released to the public today. However, uh, this information has been available to the various members uh, for some time now. And specifically, Chairman Welch asked for this information today, and I thought it would be appropriate and fitting that we bring everything you asked for. So we, only because of the fact that there's proprietary information there uh, that could affect our, our profit and cost margin, that we did not release that information. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. And that was a friendly question, sir. Um, we're back to Representative Reiners. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I want to go to the seven members and what constitutes the seven members. You've got a couple of cities mentioned, City of North Park, City of Macon. If you have a compelling interest for, for, for community interest, and again, it may be just because that's in the city limits, but when I, I looked at a map, I, you know, I'm seeing things like Stock Bridge or Lotus Road. And so I didn't know how you came up with what city should have a seat at the table. The counties are fairly obvious to me, don't most of them. But how did you make the decision on which city should have a seat at the table? It's my understanding every city has a seat at the table. Well, if I'm uh, a member of the board, then I would submit to you that Forest Park has more interest than McDonough, and McDonough's not on the board. Well, we're certainly Forest Park brought the project. So I'm going to defer to the city. Okay. If you have too many members on any board, you don't have a board, you have a mob. You want to keep those members to five or seven in order to have a working group of people to work with. And that's why we, we settled on seven. Uh, the mayor in Macon, we talked with him we, uh, at length and several times about this, the makeup of the board. And this, that's the way it was put together, sir. Okay, can I, can I appreciate you? pointing out to me the importance of having odd numbers are not too big. Yes, sir. But I'd still ask that there's a fair question on the table, which is why City A versus City B, or, or City C? Okay. Seven, seven doesn't eliminate whether you have five or seven. It doesn't eliminate the question, why did you choose this one instead of this one? Mainly because the city of Forest Park has put over $100,000 in this feasibility study. That's one reason. None yet. But Macon has a very key point. They are the center of this state. They are the, the center where other lines will interconnect, going to Savannah, going to Columbus, going to Valdosta, and it will cover the, the rest of the southern portion of the state. So that's going to be really a nerve center. In, with the overall system, and that's why that uh, they will have a very serious interest in what takes place. Have you engaged, I'm going to continue, have you engaged the city of McDonough? The city of McDonough. Am I right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, as a matter of fact, there's a lot of other cities I saw, and I just said, we, we have a letter of support from, uh, okay. from them. And on line 47, reimbursement for all actual, reasonable, and necessary expenses incurred in the performance of their duties. Do you have a model of what you would say that the performance of their duties would be? Not at this time. Okay. Is that something you anticipate on getting? If we get the authority, then we can work those things out. Yes, sir. You, you need to get that information and not have a board of operators. You need to get the approval, could you? Well, of course. Right. What does reasonable mean to you? I think we want to speak to speak to one thing, and that is this particular legislation was modeled after Bibb County's authority, because they actually have one. So we took a look at Marta's authority as well as Bibb County's authority, and we utilized the same language that was already in place. Okay, well, let's talk about the reimbursements for actual, reasonable, and necessary expenses, and then I go to line 48, that have been authorized in advance. Authorized by who? We have to be authorized by the board. And that, that's kind of, so the board is authorizing their own... You can't get any higher than that, sir. <laughs> the board will be... But there's a point here. Uh, we do this in all kinds of committees, sir, and I, I apologize to you, but I, I'm going to approve my own reasonable expenditure. Well, you might be approving it for this gentleman down here, or the board might be the... That, that be yes, yeah, well, certainly. Okay. In, in terms of reminders, I mean, I simply wanted to speak to one other thing. If you look at the fact that these members will be appointed by elected officials, and so there is a trust factor that's involved there to which that we would assume that they would uphold the public trust. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, we 
Let me just quickly, 127, have you had any discussions since you mentioned the town hall meeting? Have you had any discussions with any of the landowners in regards to potential eminent domain? Not yet. No, sir. What kind of hurdle do you expect there? Well, we'll have to see where that goes. Yes, sir. The other dynamic that I simply wanted to speak to is that this particular piece of legislation starts the conversation. It only starts, it forms an authority to allow us to gather that data. Without this document, we're not even able to move forward. So I just wanted to be clear. We're not laying tracks today. We're not floating the road today. We have to get clearance to DOT, through this body, and a number of other agencies. And so we simply want to form the authority to start the conversation. Do you believe, as I do, that when this body, because this would certainly go on a local power, do you believe that it shows legislative intent and would you pass it? Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, yes, sir. No questions? I'd like to answer a question. Yes, sir. Go ahead. You asked about how the city's work shows. Well, we did a lot of research. And I-75 is the main corridor between Atlanta and Macon. As a matter of fact, it's the most heavily traveled sector in the state of Georgia, concentrated. The highways are packed, which you know. GDOT is running out of space, going sideways. So there's only one solution for them, either to go upward or downward, which is impossible. But passenger rail is needed to alleviate the problem. The way we choose the cities is not out of preference, even so I live in Jones County, you know. But it's out of reality. Because you must have been aware that at one time they worked on a railroad from Atlanta via Griffin, to Griffin down in Macon, on a Norfolk Southern line. Well, these people came to me three years ago and asked me about it. And I told them, I'm just telling you like you, I tell you straight out, never going to happen. They didn't understand, and I told him that it does not happen because out of technicality. Because you cannot run a passenger train on a freight railroad track. And nobody wants to understand it. I'll give you a quick idea so you understand it. When you have a freight car, he has the wheels and he has a flange, and they have a flat wheel. And when you stop on a railroad crossing and you look down the rail or you see a train coming, you see them coming this way and this way. They have a leeway to go this way, but also they have a lot of track maintenance to keep the track straight and level horizontally, you know. And they spend a lot of money doing that, but they still have a lot of derailments, which you never hear about. You just hear about the ones they get in the papers, somebody, something explodes or, some, or somebody gets killed. The other ones you never hear about. A passenger train goes different. They have a hyperbole wheel, and the flange never touches the rail, except when it rides the rail in a curve, and that's why we have to super it already. But that hyperbole keeps the wheel centered on the track, so the flange never touches it. That's why it's able to run at a higher speed and a lot quieter and faster than a freight train. And that's one reason why you never can run a higher speed train on a, uh, on a freight line. You can run them maybe 50 miles, 60 miles, but that's not going to do the trick if it takes you two hours from Macon up here because you have 160 railroad crossings. We don't have a single one. As a matter of fact, the first section of the railroad we have to elevate it from Forest Park, going through, uh, uh, through um, Henry County, where it crosses I-75 right behind Eagles Landing and then go between, uh, what is it, 151 and 20, where the train station is. And the reason for that is we can get the real estate a lot cheaper. The real estate underneath can be still used for road crossing, for parking, 
But if a farmer wants to do grow corn underneath, we don't care. As long as we can grow over it, that's all it is. And the way we built the railroad track, we have absolutely no maintenance because it, it is a slab track construction, which is new in this country anyway, but it's been used in Europe. So you're going to get a better railroad than California has. I tell you that right now. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I just want to, if I may, just make myself clear. We had, we had some of the more seniors have seen a, a total war going on. We just had one in regards to Florida. <laughs> Representative Al Williams gave a beautiful speech about, about, about birthing the baby. We could potentially be birthing the baby. And, and all I want, all, all I want is to make sure we cross our T's and we dot our I's. You're going to have to ask, and the city's going to say, what about this? I'm not ready to sign off on giving somebody legislative authority on how they want to get into the next one. You see, those are very serious issues to property or all up and down this. So we just want to do a lot. That's the only reason why we have to be vetted, and that's what we're trying to do by legislative authority. But you never get public transportation without eminent domain. Never happens. Because you always have to one guy with the shotgun there that's not going to move. You know, now the other thing, I get back to your question, really. The way we pick the cities is because you have a higher density of people on, on the east side of 75. That makes the railroad more viable. The other thing is, if you look at page four, on the last paragraph, there is an ev evaluation made by the Wolfe Report. Wolfe is the Technical Institute of the Federal Government. I'm sorry, what were you saying? Page four, on the bottom. Where even the Wolpe report years ago suggested to put the railroad on the east side of 75 because the west side is too treacherous. That's exactly what they wrote in there. And Amtrak will not go down there. Now, if you want to compare us with uh, Amtrak, we have a problem because they're way far down from what we're doing, you know. Uh, that's why uh, you only get one train a day. Uh, that's why they can't go faster than 70 miles an hour in this corridor. And that's why Amtrak is pushing the, the legislator now to approve for them to buy real estate and put a double track in it and bring it up to higher speed lines so they can go faster than what they go. The uh, Boston, uh, Washington line has a top speed of 120 miles an hour, that's all. That line is profitable. Amtrak is making money on that line, but they lose money on all the rest of it. So is uh, Marta. Now let me tell you something about Marta. Marta has a good rail system. Trust me, it's a well-built train system, it's efficient, they go about 70 miles an hour. They're making money with the, with the railroad, but they're losing the money on the buses. That's where the difference is. On the rail system, they have enough passengers to ride it to pay for it, but it's the bus system that gets into the problem. We don't have the bus system. We just run the railroad. And the way we would run the railroad and, and tell them is there'd be about every two hours be a high-speed train going non-stop to Macon. Every hour would go at, and back and forth. And every hour is in a city express that stops in all the city. And every half an hour there would be a commuter train going to the next bigger city to switch to trains. So the reason why we got to them cities, we wanted to cover each major city in each county. There's going to be more stops, but these are going to be the main train stations. Each train station has been designed with enough tracks to have a motor line rearing off to the other side area, wherever they want at the later date. If they want to connect to Griffin, no problem. And we can probably get the people from Griffin up here faster than they could have gotten up to old the old idea they had, you know. So it's not limited just to this area, but it's the basic from where out you can branch out and start building a network. That's all I have to say. Oh, by the way, uh, I'm from Switzerland. I've been uh, involved in the Swiss Railroad, and I want to tell you something about the Swiss Railroad. They make about $300 million profit every year 
west of Amtrak boasts 1.06 billion in the world. It's a matter of how you run it and the equipment you use. Thanks, Thanks sir. Um, ma'am? So, Ms. Bailey. Thank you. Thank you so much, and I'm happy to address that. In fact, we may be looking at a substitute to address that very issue. Initially, when we brought this bill last year, we were only required to have Clayton County signatures, and so we went about getting those signatures. Afterwards, after the bill was vetted and we advertised it in all of the counties, they later realized, Legislative Council, that we did in fact need all of the signatures. So yes, we have several uh, legislators that are supporting the bill, specifically uh, Representative Randall, uh, who just stepped out, as well as Representative James Beverly from Bibb Counties, and I can name a few more when I drop my documentation. But yes, for that reason, I'm going to go back and ask for other members from Monroe and Butts uh, who had some questions and some hesitation with respect to the bill uh, to sign on to this legislation. Again, as I indicated, it is in fact nonpartisan. But I also wanted to address uh, Chairman Minder. He made a very valid point, in fact, that this reflects legislative intent. And I think it's important that we note that this is a committee hearing. There is another level uh, of uh, buffer that we have in terms of protection for, our, for the public. Uh, we have to get the number of signatures required to even move forward. And secondly, there's another layer with respect to the full House. All 180 members would have to make a decision in terms of whether or not we move forward. Uh, so again, I'm simply asking this committee to pass it out favorably uh, and also to give everyone an opportunity to hear it because I've also invited uh, Chairman Welch came today to hear the presentation as well. Uh, Andy, who is from Henry County. And so this, uh, we have never had a hearing in this format uh, last year. So today is also the opportunity for other members to hear the presentation from the engineer as well as the city manager. Mr. Tanner. Two other questions. And I, I'm kind of like some of the other folks said, I don't want you to think that I'm being critical of this, but Anytime we create a new governmental authority, and, and I saw this from working in, I've worked in local government for 23 years, they can take a life of their own, and they start out with one intent, and they end up with a different intent down the road. But a couple of things. One, there's not a city of Macon going to exist anymore, the way I understand it, or a, or a county of Bibb. It's Macon Bibb, so they're a consolidated government. So my question would be, in thinking about this, would you... Uh, have two appointees, one according to this that the mayor of the city of Macon would appoint and one from the county because it's a consolidated government. So they're going to be one entity legally. Um, so because that has a county of authority already, they're independent on the political aspect. And Macon Transit Authority is on board. As a matter of fact, they already gave us the area where the, where the main airport is. We already know where the, but, but let me just, I, that's really not my point. My point is, as your bill says, that the member will be appointed by the mayor of Macon and the member will be appointed by the chairperson of the board of commissioners. My point is, is though that individual is going to be the same person mm -hmm. under consolidated mm -hmm. government. So mm -hmm. I think that's something you need to think about. Thank you, and I appreciate that. I also wanted to note that we have a letter of support from uh, the Bibb County Commissioners as well as from the mayor. So we would be happy to look at a friendly amendment. And, and I'll, my only last point, and then I'll let somebody else speak that the concern I have and it's been raised several times is eminent domain yes. and I, I agree with what you're saying and, and there is a time and place for it you have to have it to get transportation across our state uh, but my question is and I think this I think I know the answer but I just want to confirm it that this entity since we're not in this legislation adopting a route where we're saying the route of this train will be from point A to point B we're just saying that it encompasses these communities and these counties that means the power of eminent domain for this organization would be in all of those communities. So they could condemn property for the purpose of building this rail system in all of those communities. So I think that goes to the point of, and correct me if I'm wrong, that's why I think it's essential that all of these communities sign off on this legislation and all the legislators because this entity will have the power to take private citizens' property. 
Absolutely. And the rules govern the fact that without the signatures, the bill doesn't move. So I'm simply asking for favorable consideration from the committee to move the conversation forward. Furthermore, uh, without the consent of those other counties, we won't be going through those areas as well. So we can't do it without their support, essentially. So I think that there's a, a buffer that's built in in terms of protection because we have to have those signatures from the legislators in addition to the fact that local and county elected officials will have buy-in through the board support. So without them on board, we don't move forward. Again, this legislation only starts the conversation. I, I guess that brings to a point of order for the chairman then. Under our rules, uh, we don't have the authority to move this bill, to do a due pass on this bill until we have the signatures. That's, That's correct. Uh, we have to have the, we can't, we can't vote the bill up or down without having the signatures. We can't do that. That's, that's the rule. And the other side of it is this, that without the, in other words, you've got your notice, but you don't have your signatures, you can't move it forward. That's the deal. So if, whether we voted it up or down, it doesn't matter. And the, the truth of the matter is we can't vote Oh, that's why we're just having a hearing. That's why I said at the beginning it's a hearing only. The the issue will be, you know, that until those signatures are met, I can't move on the bill at all. I can't sign it off. Now, the, the other side of this is, and, and that's on the procedure, the, there, there are several issues. Do I have any more questions from Mr. Mr. Coleman? I'll let you go for it. Yes, ma'am, you go ahead. I had to recognize you first while ago. I apologize. That's okay. I had a question about um, what you just said. You said the signatures. Representative Waite said that she was going to go back and get additional signatures. Are you talking about those additional signatures, or are you talking about what she has now? Maybe, can I try to explain to you what she has to have in order to do this? Okay, she has to have the... The, you got to go back to our rooms again. You know how it is with all this stuff. Okay, let me turn my map around. Okay, Henry County, they have a, their rules state a majority of the members of the Henry County delegation. Um, the Clayton County delegation will have to have a majority of the members of their delegation. The Butts County does not have rules that takes a unanimous choice there. Forsyth County does not have rules. It takes a, it takes a unanimous consent there. Bibb County has a majority rule. It would take a majority, of the, and there's not a in, the, in this bill. There's not a unanimous in Monroe and Butts, and I don't know about Henry. I'm, I'm not sure if they, all the Henry County is on there or not. I, but I know that the Monroe and Butts issue is the issue for that I know that is holding the bill. Exactly. From Monroe and Butts, correct. Forsyth is not a part of it. I understand. Uh, Forsyth. You said county. I, I meant Monroe okay. County. I apologize. I meant Forsyth City. Forsyth City. Now, the other side of that is there's one there's one city that's involved, and that has a couple of folks involved in it, too, and I think that's Forest Park. And, again, they don't have rules that take a majority of the Forest Park people there. So, again, that goes to where I am. Yes, sir? That goes to my point earlier in the question of the city. My understanding of if we deal with something, for example, the city of Sandy Smithfield, if you, if you don't have that city within your county, it takes the, the, the representative of the city of Smithville because if cities are signing off, which goes to my point, if any of those cities, quote unquote, as my understanding, please correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Chairman, but if any of those, if, if Bolingbrook, if, if that's a city with the city limits, touches that's this authority that we're granting, then it would take the required number of signatures whoever represents the city of Bolingbrook, is my understanding. Yes. Is that, I mean, how you do yes. the metropolitan areas? Yes. And that's why I asked you a question earlier about what, what cities actually touched it where the city went over and overlaid that. Mm -hmm. Because if not, you could have four cities that that falls into, and then to get into the selection of who gets the authority and not mm -hmm. to have the signatures would be a violation of all the rules. Well, we can't move forward without a signature. We're very clear about that. We're not asking you to do that. We simply wanted to have a hearing, to have the bill vetted, yes. vetted, and to make sure that you had all the information to be informed. And I want to give somebody all the information that those may not have known that's been the number of seasons. I asked that earlier. Absolutely. You know, some people may not have had all the information then. Absolutely. All right. Question, Mr. Coleman. Well, that, and they've answered a lot of the cities with one, and uh, most of our questions answered. Let me just go another direction on this. Let's say this becomes a reality again. What contact do you have with Marna? 
you know, to, to, to hook on into the lineup. You know, because, I mean, you got a, what, 10, I don't know how you get from the last stop in Forest Park now to the airport, for instance. Buses, I guess. So what, what, what conversation you had with that agency? Well, let me put it this way. Uh, the city of Atlanta, she, she up, came to me and asked me, what about that lineup? I said, we have a train station. You can connect to us any way you want to. We connect to you any way. All you have to do is make up your mind which one you want to go. We even build it for you. We're trying so to, we have no problem. They're trying to get into Gwinnett now. That's well, <laughs> that's one reason why we started out in Forest Park. Okay. <laughs> now, let me explain you something. You can go anywhere in the world where you have a metropolitan area like Atlanta. They do not have just one train station. They have three, four yeah. train stations. People have to learn to transfer, just like with the airplanes, you have to oh, yeah. transfer. And the same thing happens with trains. As a matter of fact, you're placing a plan for a railroad that should be there. That train station is not going to be big enough. I tell you that right now. You might as well buy the Norfolk 7th uh, freight yard over there. And that's how you're talking about how great the martyr system is. Well, the system is good. Fantastic. And you're talking about 10 miles. So I just think there should be some conversation existing here if you're going to do it. Well, the problem is Atlanta didn't do nothing. They have a beautiful airport. Okay. They have a beautiful international, uh, whatever you call it, terminal, but no transportation to it except parking lots. They didn't think of running a march over there or having a, a bus connection downtown. They're waiting for a railroad station here in Atlanta to come from New York probably to connect. Well, I don't know. But that's, <laughs> that, that was that's, a, that's none, of, none of my business. Okay. I'm going to just say something. I'm going to be the other question. Hang on. I asked earlier about um, the accountant. I see what's in Randall step back in. Do you think that she might be? Incumbents that you'd like to make regarding this? Um, well, I'm, I'm here just to show support. Uh, it's been mentioned that my mayor and uh, has been very involved in Bibb County. You know, we understand we're the heart of Georgia, and we also refer to it as God's country. And we uh, we know that anything leads to anywhere, you can come to Bibb County. We certainly welcome it, and we're going to do our part. Uh, we have been a little bit busy, so we haven't been as involved. Uh, as far as the, the, the legislators of, uh, uh, part of the delegation have not been as involved because we had that little, you know, that little consolidation thing going on. Uh, but now we're done. We're working that out. We're going to go uh, on uh, line uh, January 1st of 2014. But I, I can only see this project as being an asset to our county and, and our consolidated government. Thank you. Representative Randall, um, any other questions, members of the committee? I think we're kind of holding it down here. Let, let me, let me give you the chair's ideas, okay? I'm kind of, I was kind of laid, laid back into it and kind of uh, been around. And then back in 2002, there was a movement, as you mentioned, sir, that, you know, the Norfolk line was going to be bought from Atlanta down to Bibb. That was a, back in 2002. And, and there was going to be a rail service at that point in time. And if you remember, Brooks, a lot of these folks weren't here at that time, but we, but Ed, Ed and I were here, and you were here, and that's about, I think that may be it. But the, oh, okay, Miss Nikki, I remember. Yeah, she was only five. She was five when she came up here. But uh, the bottom line is that that, that kind of went south with the with the election that went on in 2000 and, and 2004. The the issue I think that we have here is, is where we are that that, that really kind of hits the points and I think it's where you're going to have to convince people to well in order to jump on board with this thing and, and, and first of all is your bondingness and your ability to bond and how is that going to affect the taxpayer now usually with the bonded indebtedness that you if you're going to get in a bond and you're, you're an authority from a, from, from a given and granted uh, somewhere along the way the government gets involved in it uh, usually it depends on what kind of bonds you're selling and what kind of bonds you're going to do, but you're going to indebt somebody that has to pay, and unless you have the, the assets up front, unless you've got all this property bought and can put it up, 
uh, you've got to you've got to indebt someone or something, and they're going to have to come across with it. That's one thing I'm going to warn you folks about because that's going to come up. That'll probably be the biggest issue that comes up as to how you're going to handle that without collateral. Okay, that's a, or with collateral, and what kind of collateral we're going to put up for it. And this is going to be a multi-billion dollar project. I'm not going to say it's going to be in the millions, it's going to be in the billions. And when you start talking that kind of money, uh, I've never seen a billion in anything unless it's fire ants. Okay, I've seen a lot of them, but that's the only thing a billion I've ever seen. So I don't know, after a while it gets to be a real money, as they said up in Washington, a million here, a million there. But uh, that's one of the issues I think you're going to have to explain and really have on the book, you know, in order to move this forward. Second thing, I think eminent domain is going to have to be extremely well explained and how you intend to use it because, like you said, the guy with a shotgun out there and the bulldozer pulls up in his yard, he's not going to be happy. Um, and or the business owner or the or the, for that matter, some street that may be piled up and you have to come across or whatever. And, and blocking off somebody's, you know, field down in Butts County that he's got, you know, sweet potatoes on one side and a corn crop on the other and he's got to get across the road, it's going to be kind of hard. So that's the kind of reasons I'm saying eminent domain will have to be explained um, to the nth degree. Contracts and contracts for indebtedness being able to accept money and bonds and whatever things that you might want to be able to do, or any kind of money that you may accept, and how you're going to accept it, and who's going to be in charge of that, and how that's going to be weighed and, and measured, and who's going to audit it is going to be an interesting thing, and who your oversight is going to be is going to be a very big issue. Because, you know, we can, the, if we create you in an authority, somebody has to be the, the guardian angel, um, and that is who audits, and that's usually the one that is going to be the one. And don't tell me it's going to be the revenue department because they'll come in here and start beating us in the head with a shovel. Um, and the last point that I think you'll have to explain is where does the profit go? and who is going to profit by it, and who, who wins and who loses in the deal. And I think those four issues are probably going to have to be explained as we move forward in it, okay? Now again, today, we can't take a vote because you don't have the signatures. But I wanted to hear it, I wanted to see, I wanted to have a public hearing and let folks understand where we're going with this. Uh, Ms. Waits has worked on this real hard and she deserves a hearing, deserves time. I'm usually that kind of person. Uh, I'm glad we moved the data transportation back over here because they don't have a whole lot of time over there. And we don't need it, but we like to hear good stuff and I think this is good stuff. Uh, eventually, you know, if we ran it from, from Atlanta to Savannah, uh, I'd like for y'all to remember that, you know, the armadillos need some company down where I live, too. <laughs> and we'd like it to run down to Jackson. It wouldn't be a bad idea to connect Atlanta to Jackson. And, uh, of course, I'd catch it, come up here, but I'll probably be 186 years old when I catch it. But, you know, I'm kidding. I'm hoping it's not going to be that long. <laughs> well, that's right. But, uh, but in all honesty, I would like to see, you know, somewhere along the way moving that, because if you live where I live, or live where Mr. Miners live. We don't have a we don't have a interstate running through either one of our towns, Albany or Douglas. And if you can imagine that, we don't we'd like to see rail because it might be something that would be a little more expanding for our communities and our economic development. So that being said, if no other, yes, sir, go ahead, Mr. Miners. Hit on a real good point. This 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 whole Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. The, the, the issue that the, I think you need to, to bear to, 
to bring fruit to bear will be the bonding effort, eminent domain, the contracts of indebtedness and your oversight, and your profit where it's going and how it's going to be levied and you know who's going to profit from it. Well, well, the investors would certainly profit. I understand that. Okay. But I mean, I'm just, besides the investors, where the where the profits therein lie. I mean, you could look at the economic development question and how the, the communities will profit and how how the along the rail line itself and where where these folks where these stops are going to be. How that you know how businesses and and uh, for, for job opportunities along this rail line, I think you can see that that could be a very, very big issue along the way there. That, that's certainly one of our selling points is the environmental uh, dynamic in terms of taking thousands of vehicles off the road as well as spurring economic development along those quarters in addition to job creation, which is certainly a major challenge in the state. But finally, I just want to remind you that this particular hot uh, well, will run along the highway. So I'm not as concerned with the eminent domain piece because it runs right along the highway. Uh, so I think that that's something that, and that's one of the reasons that we chose the route specifically so that we would not infringe upon businesses and homes uh, as much. So keep that in mind as well. I understand, but there's somebody living on the highway. Absolutely. And he's going to be standing there with a shovel and a gun <laughs> and waiting for you to come along. But And anybody that's going to take his place, you know. And Mr. Chairman, I really want to thank everyone that attended today uh, for such a large body on a Thursday in the late afternoon. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you hearing us out. Uh, and we're hoping that you encourage uh, the members in the Monroe and Butts delegation to support this. I know day 35 is approaching very quickly. That's what I want to know. Where we go from now? Okay. The, the, the issue is this. this. This bill is a local bill. Okay? And this is a local bill. This is not a general bill. And if the signatures are met and she can make it and get them all on there, we can put it on the local calendar. But if it, if it doesn't meet it, we'll have to, it's not dead. It's kind of like Frankenstein. It lays there until next year, you know, and it can rise again, um, like the South did. So, um, but the, uh, the, the basic thing is, is the, the, uh, the issue is that the bills is like anything else up here. It's, it's still alive. And you've got some time, and if you can, it's going to take you, though, the effort and the effort from other folks. And remember, I don't know if you heard my speech the other day, but sometimes it makes a little difference to reach out across the way. If you believe in something, it don't hurt to reach out, ask somebody, hey, help Miss Waits out. And we won't, I don't think it will hurt anything to just have the feasibility to, to look at this thing. We're not putting the money in this effort. They're just creating the authority. They've got to come up with the investors and, and, the, and the wherewithal of how this thing goes. And so, again, sometimes a, a little uh, a persuasion from your own voice will, will help uh, move something along that you believe in. And with that, I'm going to... Unless you got, you got something else. Uh, we have history at our fingertips, and it's my belief. If you recall, when, the, when we laid the federal highways many, many, many years ago, that was pushed back. And so we have an opportunity here to do something that's never been done in, in the United States, and I simply just ask that you guys uh, assist me in terms of getting the signatures necessary to move this forward. Okay. And if you will, uh, we'll stand adjourned. <laughs> I've got